If you spend any time at all on book talk, you've probably come across the trend of women recommending books that are full of female rage. Books that allow you to envelop yourself in feminine anger. And I must admit, while I'm pretty in touch with a lot of my emotions, I'm not particularly in touch with my rage. But these days, I feel like it's kind of necessary. Maybe I just need a little bit more rage in my life, you know? So in service of my own internal journey to find my feminine rage for maybe the first time as I approach 30, I decided to do yet another book talk challenge, reading five books that are recommended over and over again in the category of female rage. So over the course of this video, I will be reading and reviewing My Year of Rest and Relaxation, A Certain Hunger, Her Body and Other Parties, The Vegetarian, and Lucy. So if you, like me, are in need of a little push to get in touch with your female rage, then join me for this video. I'm gonna get started with My Year of Rest and Relaxation. I have heard so much about this book and I'm very excited to jump in. So let's go. Okay, so I just finished my year of rest and relaxation, and I really hope this isn't a sign of things to come with this video, because this was not it for me. On the one hand, I can completely understand what the author was trying to do. I have read other work that touch on similar themes that I've really enjoyed, but for me, the execution here was just severely lacking. This book touches on depression, eating disorders, suicide and suicidal ideation, as well as prescription drug abuse and addiction. And for me personally, again, this is totally my personal opinion. You can disagree. And if you do, I'd love to hear your thoughts respectfully, of course, in the comments. But personally for me, when I'm reading books that wade into this type of subject matter, I prefer that they either live in the reality, are grounded in that reality and really portray the severity and and try to express that to the reader in a way that is respectful, or the complete opposite, that it is so ridiculous, so removed from reality, so absurd, so extreme, so that you can kind of bask in that absurdity and allow yourself to accept the dark comedy, accept sort of the weirdness and the silliness of it without it feeling like it's making fun of the serious subject matter that's being explored. Again, not everyone will agree with me on that, but for me, this just kind of sat in a weird place in between. It was much too exaggerated to feel real. It wasn't grounded at all. And things that were pushed to an extreme just for effect it felt like for shock value, but it didn't go far enough for me. It felt like a weird middle ground that didn't really do much of anything. So personally for me, this was just kind of in a weird middle place. It wasn't particularly effective at what it was trying to get across in my personal opinion. I think if you have an interest in reading a book that touches on the ways that women's mental health has been pushed aside and the ineffective treatment that is just to rest, if you're going through a mental breakdown, or are really struggling with your mental health, I would highly recommend The Yellow Wallpaper, which is a short story. I think it's about 30 pages long and it is much more effective in my opinion than this book, which is 10 times longer and is simultaneously more grounded, more realistic, hits you more in the gut with its sincerity, while also simultaneously having some of those sort of absurd elements that elevate it and make it interesting and engaging in a way that maybe reading just a very blunt, realistic version of the story might not be. So anyway, I would highly recommend that if you're interested in that subject matter. For me, this just wasn't particularly effective as someone who has suffered from depression, who has had an eating disorder. I could not relate to this at all. I didn't really appreciate how these mental illnesses were portrayed. I also hated the characters, which seems to have been the point but while I don't mind unlikable characters, when there's a reason for them to be unlikable, when there's a larger purpose, here it just kind of felt like the narrator was awful just to be awful, just because the author thought it was fun to write a really mean, self-centered, self-absorbed, vain human being. And it just, it didn't work for me. 
So this was not it for me. Also, in terms of this challenge, in terms of this book being classified as part of this female or feminine rage trend in literature, for me, this completely fails at being about female rage because the protagonist isn't angry. She just feels nothing. She is completely numb. She is completely detached. I would say the emotions she gets closest to when she does get close to emotion are irritation, self-righteousness, and sadness and grief, which are all fine emotions to explore in literature. But for me, this book wasn't about rage in any way. And the only connection I can draw here between this book and female rage is that I happen to be female and it made me feel rage because I disliked it so much. So that is my year of rest and relaxation. Not a hit, unfortunately. I really, really hope that the other four books I picked for this challenge are significantly better. Otherwise, this video is going to be a bit of a downer. <laughs> but alas, there are approximately five billion trigger warnings for this book. So check out the book card so you can see those. See if this is a book that you would have any interest in reading. I, of course, wouldn't recommend it in general, but I also think it could be triggering for a lot of people, especially in terms of eating disorders and suicidal ideation, suicide. So yes. Moving on to the next book of this challenge that I am crossing my fingers is significantly better. I am going to pick up The Vegetarian by Han Kang. And this is about a character who starts having really violent nightmares that lead her to give up eating meat. And that starts this ripple effect in her life. And I find this concept really interesting. I'm a vegan myself. I've been vegan for almost 10 years now. So I always find it interesting when literature decides to tackle vegetarianism or veganism. It's always interesting for me to read whether I agree or disagree with the take. So I'm looking forward to this. I've heard good things. We shall see. So I finished The Vegetarian last night and this book was not at all what I expected, but I'm still really glad I read it. This book is less about vegetarianism, although there are some underlying themes of human cruelty, human violence, and who I would consider the main character or the protagonist, even though we never really get her point of view. Her rejection of that human cruelty by deciding to go vegetarian, and in her case, strict vegetarian or vegan, that undertone of her discomfort with human violence, vicious, carnal, animalistic side, her rejection of that is where the title of the book comes from. The inciting incident for the story to take place, the fact that she is having these violent dreams and they make her so uncomfortable that she just can't participate in eating meat anymore. But this book was so much more than that discussion and really that was sort of a framing device for the deeper exploration that really seemed to me to be about misogyny and living as a woman within a sexist society and trying to process the limitations that are put on women, in this case in South Korean culture, this idea that women are expected to be subservient and obedient, always pleasant, always accommodating. What's important about them is their relationship with men in their lives, how they are as a daughter to their father, how they are as a wife to their husband, and less so who they are as a person, as an individual human being, and what they want. I found this book really intriguing in the way that it explored the suppression of women's freedom and how in this case going vegetarian could be perceived as an attempt to take back control over her own life 
to take the reins and really claim bodily autonomy, have that freedom to decide what they do with their body, what goes into their body, how they eat, how they live, and how viscerally uncomfortable this choice made everyone around her. Her making a choice for her that was not preemptively decided by her father or her husband, but that this was her own choice and not necessarily something that any of the people in her life wanted for her was really upsetting for the people in her life, especially her husband and her father. It's told in three chapters. The first chapter is told from the perspective of the main character's husband. The second chapter is told from the perspective of her brother-in-law. And the third chapter is told from her sister's perspective. And we only get a couple little sprinklings of her own perspective. And I think only entirely her describing some of the dreams that she's had. So we very much don't get to experience the story through the main character's eyes. And I think that really reinforces this feeling that she's not allowed to be a whole person. She's not supposed to have her own thoughts and feelings and wishes and dreams and personality and beliefs and morals. She is supposed to be what everyone around her needs her to be. And the story is told from all of those external perspectives all the way around her while ignoring her perspective and why she's made the choices that she's made. I can see how some people might dislike a lot of aspects of this book, but I feel like the choices, though disturbing at times, were really appropriate for the story and very effective. So while I can't say that I necessarily enjoyed reading this book, I definitely think it's a very good book and I'm glad that I read it. I've seen some people interpret this as a story about having an eating disorder, and while there's definitely a lot in here that likely will be quite triggering to those who have had an eating disorder, I just don't think that's what the story was about. I think this character shares similar traits to a lot of people who do suffer from eating disorders, which is really this attempt to regain control over your life by controlling what you put in your body. But to me, this book isn't explicitly about eating disorders or veganism or vegetarianism. It's really about, to me, misogyny, sexism, the oppression of women, and one woman's attempt to take back her own life despite all of the pressures that have been put on her and the ways in which she's been disenfranchised. I would also say that similar to my year of rest and relaxation, although there are very few similarities between these two books for me, one thing that is similar is that I also wouldn't say this book is really about female rage. Again, the main character is not angry really at all. She again is very disconnected, very numb. There is a lot of grief and sadness in her that I can sense, a loneliness. I really don't see that anger come through necessarily, but even though this book to me isn't about anger, it's still a really beautiful, poignant, painful feminist work, and for that I think it's incredibly valuable. I would recommend this book wholeheartedly, but with a giant caveat that you please check out trigger warnings ahead of time. This book is not an easy read, it's very upsetting at various points for different reasons, so definitely check those out and take care of your own mental health. I just have to give it five out of five stars. So, so far, one big hit and one big flop. I'm very excited to see where we go from here. The next book I'm picking up is A Certain Hunger. This is apparently a book about the world's most charming psychopath. So we'll see how it goes. And because it's a Friday and I usually have more time to read over the weekend, I'm also going to start Her Body and Other Parties. This is a book that's been on my TBR for just about forever. I put it on my 22 and 2022 reading list. This is a book that I've really wanted to get to. So hopefully I will finish both of these this weekend and then I can come back and update you on Monday with my thoughts.
five days since my last update, and since then I finished the last three books of this challenge. So first, let's talk about A Certain Hunger. A Certain Hunger is, at its core, a book about the female experience, the frustration and the need and the falsity, the show of femininity, the endless hunger, and the lust for an escape from all of the expectations pressing down on you. Dorothy, our protagonist, is charismatic, if completely unhinged, and she is a food critic and writer who eventually decides to murder her male lovers and eat their flesh. Yes, this is a book about a cannibal, <laughs> and yes, it did reinforce my choice to become a vegan almost 10 years ago, <laughs> and also not to be a cannibal, obviously. This story is irreverent, ironic, pretentious, and ridiculously bloody. Now, this is not a perfect book by any means. There are a lot of areas I could nitpick if I wanted to, but honestly, I just kind of enjoyed this. I found the protagonist really interesting to follow. I found her entertaining. There are definitely portions that were way too graphic and gory for my tastes, and I kind of had to skim and only half read those sections because they were just a lot. So definitely keep that in mind if you're thinking about reading this. It does not shy away from the whole killing and eating people thing. It's very unsettling, but it was a really interesting take on what it means to be a woman and how we react to angry women in our society or women who are not as we expect them to be and all the ways that we try to justify why they are the way they are. It was quite the ride. So I give A Certain Hunger four pints of blood out of five. I will add in terms of this challenge yet again, I'm not sure that I would say Dorothy is angry necessarily. There are a few moments of anger, I suppose, sprinkled among the pages, but she's pretty clinical in the way she goes about things. But I feel like out of the three I've read so far, this is the most ragey, so there's that. Next, I finished Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado, and this collection of short stories was fantastic. Absolutely blew me away, and I can't believe it took me so long to read this. I knew I would love it. It's why it's been on my TBR for so long. I have continually meant to read it, and I kept putting it off, but holy crap, this was amazing. Her Body and Other Parties is a deeply feminist work from a queer perspective that delves into a variety of genres, literary tropes, and cliches to tell women's stories with a raw honesty. Machado reimagines fairy tales and urban legends to explore the way that these stories and society at large tends to trap women with expectation. This was imaginative, gripping, haunting, melancholic, and so visceral. I absolutely adored it. I could go into detail about every single story, but I won't do it now because this video would go on forever. But hit me up in the comments if you want to talk about your favorite story from this collection, because again, could talk about it forever. This was amazing, and I give it five gigantic stars out of five. I get so excited I throw my phone on the floor. <laughs> the rage the protagonists in these stories feel vary depending on the story, but you can definitely feel the undercurrent of rage from Machado herself, as well as a poignant sadness as she reflects on the experiences of women through these different stories. It's palpable. with Lucy, we come to the last book of this challenge. I just finished this book today, so all of my thoughts and feelings are very fresh on the surface. I feel like out of the five, this is the one in which the anger was the most in the forefront. I think Lucy's rage and frustration and dissatisfaction with her life and everything around her is just completely palpable every single page. And I found it very relatable for this time in her life. She's a 19-year-old girl who's moved from the West Indies to North America to become a nanny for a wealthy family and their four young daughters. And she is very switched on. She knows herself. She knows a lot about the world. She understands a lot more about how the world works than the people around her give her credit for, and also more than they seem to understand the world, even having decades on her, both because of her character and who she is as 
a person, but also because of her lived experience growing up in the West Indies and feeling the aftershocks of colonization on her homeland. There's this awareness of the evils and the hypocrisy of society and human beings that those around her with more privilege don't see. And I feel like this character, Lucy, certainly it comes across that she's felt this way for basically her whole life and that she's been aware of what it means to be a woman and been dissatisfied by it for basically her whole life. There are references to her childhood where that is pretty clear. But for me reading this, I, f I could really relate to her because definitely went through a period of feeling as angry and frustrated and disconnected as Lucy is in this book around the same point in my life, around 1920, and just having had enough not wanting to deal with it, just wanting to disengage from society while simultaneously coming to terms with who I was as a person, as an adult. And that's what Lucy is going through as well. She really is flourishing into the adult version of herself and figuring out what that means and what she wants for herself, what she wants for her life. But she's really going through this angry period. And I don't know, I just, I kind of loved I just kind of loved it, to be honest. Our experiences were very different in so many ways, but there was still so much I could relate to in the way that she felt. And yeah, I just loved it. <laughs> I would classify this as a character study. There's not a huge amount of plot. There aren't a lot of other characters that really get the spotlight. This is really Lucy's story. And even more than that, it's the story of what's going on in her mind. Very internal, lots of reminiscing and reflecting on her childhood and her home and her current trajectory and relationships and experiences. And I just found it really, really well done and a really enjoyable read. So I give Lucy five out of five stars. I feel like out of the five, this one is the best fit for the prompt of female rage. There really is just so much anger in Lucy and it's justified anger and I get it. And I feel like in that way, this is kind of the perfect way to finish this video because reading Lucy's story and the other four books in this challenge, I feel like have started to open the door again for me a little bit towards that side of my emotional experience. I definitely am less angry than I was when I was Lucy's age. <laughs> And in some ways, I think that's a good thing. But I definitely feel like as I enter this next decade of my life, maybe it's time to sprinkle a little more of that rage just in amongst the rest of my emotions and be unapologetic about it. Women are not supposed to delve into anger and rage. It really is seen as the antithesis to femininity. And I liked this challenge for reminding me that rage is just as valid an emotion as literally any other emotion I feel and that I'm allowed to feel it when I feel it and to express it, obviously in such a way that doesn't hurt other people, just like any emotion, <laughs> but it's valid, it's okay, it is part of the human experience, and I don't want to live a life stifled by society's expectations of what women should or are allowed to feel. So those are my thoughts on the books that I picked up for this challenge. Honestly, this video was a pretty big hit for me with the exception of My Year in Rest and Relaxation, which I wouldn't recommend. The other four were really great feminist reads and very thought provoking each in their own way and also each entertaining in their own way. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting. Of course, as always, if you've read any of the books included in this video, please let me know in the comments what you thought. Do you agree with my impressions of them? Do you disagree? I want to know why. Let's have a discussion. I'd also love to know if you are thinking of picking up any of these books because of this video. If you're adding any of them to your TBR, I would love to know that. And of course, if you have any recommendations for me based on my feelings about these five books, if you know of anything similar you think I would enjoy, please leave that down below as well. Because again, my TBR is endless, but I continue to add to it every single day because I am masochist apparently. So that's it for this video. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'm going to get going and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye friends.